Levesque and Goss here with you on 104.5 The Team and 104.5 theteamcom And tonight, the New York Knicks are back in action. They take to court at 9 o'clock Eastern time as they visit the Phoenix Suns and join us on the phone lines. He covers the Knicks for the New York Post. Mark Berman joins us. And Mark, what's this relationship like right now between the superstar Carmelo Anthony and the Zen master, the guru of basketball for the Knicks, Phil Jackson? Yeah, I think that uh, they've agreed uh, to, you know, no more war words in the in the press. Uh, I think Carmelo was very irritated, you know, by the uh, criticism, a criticism that he's heard before, a criticism which fans have booed him for recently, and for the president to to make a point of it uh, on a TV interview during the winning times and also when Carmelo is playing very well in the clutch, I think rubbed him the wrong way. Like, what's the point? Uh, Phil did speak his piece. They had a summit at USC where they were practicing. And I think they still explained to Carmelo that he is trying to help him and he's doing nothing to hurt him. And I think Carmelo took it. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, he knows that's Phil. And I think he understands that it's not going to probably be the last time. But uh, I think right now, I think they're both beyond it. And despite that relationship between the two guys, the Knicks are having success this season. Right now, they're listed as the third seed in the Eastern Conference. Are you surprised how this team's playing so far this season this quickly? Yeah, well, the Eastern Conference is mediocre, a lot of mediocre teams. You know, although they're in third, they're only two and a half games out of the 10th seed. So if they go on a little losing streak, they'd be in trouble. Also, their record against winning teams is not good. And they've stayed healthy, and we don't know if that's going to continue. When I say stay, you know, they've had some injuries here and there, but the key is as long as the big three is healthy, uh, Rose, Anthony, and Porzingis, you know, they should be just fine. Rose missed a couple of games with back spasms, and it hurt. I mean, Brandon Jennings has been a very good backup, but they get exposed depth-wise when Brandon is starting. So they have to get those. Those three have to stay healthy. And if they do, there's a chance at a home court uh, finish, uh, top four home court advantage in the first round. There's a chance. And that definitely gets Knicks fans excited. It's Levac and Goss here with you on 104.5 The Team and 104.5theteam.com. And joining us on the phone lines, he covers the Knicks for the New York Post, Mark Berman. Mark, Brian Mariano filling in for Jeff Levac today. Now, you touched on Brandon Jennings a little bit there. Is he one of the reasons why the Knicks are so successful this early because of how well he's played in the beginning? Yeah, he's been one of the best signings in the NBA. Uh, Cost-wise, one year, $5 million. He's the engine of their bench. You know, their bench, there were a lot of questions. It's very inexperienced. They have a lot of guys who haven't played much, like the Holiday, uh, Kuzminskis, Hernan Gomez, both European rookies. But Jennings has really established an identity with that bench as a fast-paced, hard-nosed, up-and-down-the-floor uh, type of unit. And he really has adjusted. You know, he's been a starter most of his career before the Achilles tear. And there were, I was concerned about how effective he'd be. He's really tough-nosed. Jeff loves him. He's a little, gets out of control once in a while, but uh, it's almost worth it considering the contributions he's made. You know, we wrote today that, you know, look out for him. If the Knicks continue to win, he should be a six-man-of-the-year candidate at, or most improved player because he had kind of fallen off the map last season. And then... Uh, he had the injury two seasons ago. So, uh, huge pickup. Problem is, you can't re sign him. He'll be a free agent. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to re sign Rose, I don't know if you could re sign Brandon Jennings, which another point is this might be the Knicks' best roster. You know, they, they might, this might be the roster that they have to take and, and really make the most of it. Very interesting storyline to follow throughout this season. And also, a storyline tonight in the matchup against the Phoenix Suns is that the Knicks head coach, Jeff Hornacek, is going up against his former organization, his former employer in the Phoenix Suns. Is this a redemption game for Jeff Hornacek tonight? Yeah, he'll never admit it, but he wasn't happy with the way it ended. Fired in February. Uh, they made a couple of 
bad trades, trying to improve, and instead they took uh, two steps back, and it cost Jeff his job. He had a nice thing going that first season. Uh, he, you know, spoke about it this morning a lot of Phoenix media, and he admitted that, listen, it's not that they didn't want to get better. I mean, they weren't trying to dismantle the team and hurt the team, but it's unfortunate that he admitted he didn't get a, a bigger chance, and he was definitely hurt that it would come out afterward that he had lost the locker room, which he denies. He said he got a lot of text messages from the players when uh, he was fired, and he thinks that was completely management planting a false story. Now, Mark, we don't want to really overlook the Phoenix Suns tonight, but Thursday you guys go to Golden State. Now, the question is, is this going to be like the barometer for this team? They play an upper echelon team like the Warriors. Do you think the Knicks really have a chance there, and can we actually see them rise up and beat a team like the Warriors? Yeah, I think it's really interesting because they were uncompetitive against Cleveland uh, a week ago at the Garden. I mean, they got their doors blown off, but they didn't have Derrick Rose. So now they have Derrick in a full roster for that game. And I don't expect them to win, but I think Knicks fans and the media, I think we're looking to see them be competitive, uh, taken into the fourth quarter with a shot at winning the game. Listen, it's deep into the road trip, and you get worn down on the road and on the still different time zone. So uh, are they going to be at their best? Maybe not, but at least they'll have Rose. They they really missed Rose's uh, attack mentality against Cleveland. You know, Cleveland just ran all over them, and the Knicks had no answers. But I think it is a barometer because that Cleveland game was a little depressing. Uh, they were never in it. Again, tip-off tonight. It's the Phoenix Suns taking on the New York Knicks. Tip-off set for 9 o'clock. He covers the Knicks for the New York Post. Mark Berman. Mark, thank you so much for the time. And enjoy the nice weather out there in the desert. I'm assuming it's not snowing out in Arizona. No, we have a great day. It's 70, sunny, valley of the sun, as they call it. And uh, it's, uh, it's great. We had no sun in L.A., but it's uh, Phoenix is made up for it. Yeah, it must be a tough life out there, Mark. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Thanks for taking some time away from the sun with us and enjoy the game. Thanks, Mark. All right, thanks so much, guys. Take care.